Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. My co-founder, Art Kirsch, and I are with the Brain Whisperer, Steve Campbell. Steve, Hello. welcome. Thank you. Good to see you again. Hi, Steve. Hi. How are you, John? Art. So, normally we... Uh, Give you like a little prod. We know what we're going to talk about. Yeah. But how about today, dealer's choice? What would you like? What would you like to talk about today? Well, the world is in kind of a troubling time, and uh, what I want to talk about today is creating goals even during this troubled times that actually work, and the fact that psychologically goals have nothing to do with time. So what do you mean, Stephen? Let me share with you, first of all, how goals do not work and why goals, many of the goals that we create for ourselves don't work. Here's a typical goal. I will lose 30 pounds. I will take that trip to Alaska. I will pay off that loan. And you know what the brain says when you say that? The brain says, wonderful. Hope you do. Good luck. I'm going to take a nap. Because number one, I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. And number two, I'm so busy dealing with the present that the future is not really important to me. So you put your goals out in the future somewhere and I don't have to do a thing. And so I will do this, I will do that, I will do this. The brain isn't going to help you meet that goal. And if there's anything that you need to meet a goal, it's your mind. And if the mind is not there for you, it may get met for a little bit, but over the long run, probably not. So what do we do? What do we switch? We live in three time frames: the past, the present, and the future. Many people live in the past in the good old days. The problem with that is that when you live in the good old days, you're not going to be creating goals. Then you have people who live in the present. They live in the present. I'm just being realistic. And they say, I'm not going to um, believe in, in these angelic little goals. That doesn't work for me. That's why goals don't work for them either. What we want to do is live into the future, but as if it is into the present right now. Let me illustrate. When I taught this in colleges, I would tell my students that goals have nothing to do with time. And to illustrate, I would ask my students, somebody give me a goal. And let's say way in the back, Mary says, my goal, Mr. Campbell, is to lose 30 pounds in six months. And I said, that's wonderful, Mary. Can we cut that down to five months? And she thinks for a second, she says, yes, I think I can. And then I say, can we cut down now to four months? And she says, well, let's see, 30 pounds divided by four is seven and a half. That's seven and a half pounds a month. Yes, I think I could lose seven and a half pounds in one month. It would really be pushing up, but I think I could. And then I say, let's cut it down to three months. Oh, Mr. Campbell, now that's pushing. That's 10 pounds in one month. Let's keep going, Mary. Let's go down to two months. Wait a minute. You can't lose. That would be 15 pounds in one month. You can't lose 15 pounds in one month. Let's cut it down to one month. Mr. Campbell, now you're really scaring me. Let's cut it down to three weeks two weeks, one week. Mr. Campbell, now you're being crazy. Seven days, six days, five days, four days, three days, two days, one day. Now, I'm already there. That's what I'm locking on to. Let me illustrate. When my father died, he was very young. And when Mary and I drove away from the memorial service, she said to me, if you die early, I'll kill you. Because I don't want to be a widow for 40 years like your mom's going to be, which she was. And I was about 40 pounds more than I weigh now. 
And I said, yeah, you're right, I should lose this weight. So I would get up in the morning and run and swim. And I did that for 25 years and it didn't work. Why? Because of what I said to myself, I would look in the mirror and I would say, you are a 240 pound man who must lose 40 pounds. You will lose 40 pounds. And do you know what my brain said? My brain believes what I tell it. So when I said, I am a 240 pound man, my brain said, yes, you are. And I'll make sure you stay that way because that's my job. That's how you see yourself. And then when I said, I will lose 40 pounds, the brain said, good luck, I hope you do. I'm gonna go take a nap. Because again, I can't control the future. And I'm so busy dealing with the present. So it didn't work. And finally, I began studying psychology. And I realized that I was giving myself the wrong message. So I switched that goal to the present. I love the fact that I only weigh 200 pounds. And I look great. When I said that, my brain freaked out. It said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't weigh 200 pounds, you weigh 240. And that's when I said, I'm in control. I'm saying that the brain believes it. I'm locking on to it. And my brain said, oh, okay, you're the boss, but now we've got a problem. You gotta lose 40 pounds. How are we gonna do that? So what I did was I locked on to being a 200 pound person. How does a 200 pound person eat? He eats very little, he exercises a lot. And over about a year, I lost the weight. The here's the important point. There is still a self image in my mind of a 240 pound person. It's still there because I've never had lobotomy. But I see myself at 200 pounds right now. And every single time I sit down for a meal, I lock onto being that weight. So what do I wanna say? The key is not how you see yourself in the future. The key is how you see yourself now and how you want to be. I was 240 and I said, I will be 200 and it didn't work. So I switched that to where I'm saying I'm 200 now, I'm locking onto that, I'm eating that way, I'm exercising that way. And my brain not only believed me, it helped me do it and I lost the weight and the weight is still off. So now is a good time to replace the way you see yourself with new positive things. And your brain will say, okay, wow. Simple as well, that. It's nice to know that my brain is so agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> My, my brain is a pushover. I can tell it anything. It, it, it is. It. That's right. It is a pushover. That's a nice thing about it. You know what? It's a, it's a great analogy. Um, the time element is it, you really, your brain really works in the present. Yeah, it really yeah. does. Yeah. 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 And, and, that's and where you're, that's we're where talking you're about, we're, we're talking about our self talk, what we say to ourselves our self-image, how we see ourselves. So yeah. we need to make the, the future, our goals, our future That's goals, right. our present image. Into the present. Into and the our present. present talk. Bring them into the present. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Great stuff, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Glad Thank you, you liked Steve. it. Good. Let's do it again sometime. Let me know what works for you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.